Hi everybody. Today, Luna and I here are going to take you on a virtual field trip of the Corona Del Mar tide pools. Low tides at, at noon today, so we'll be down there, oh, just before low tide, which is good. And the low tide today is zero feet. We are heading south on Pacific Coast Highway. So on my right, Pacific Ocean, it's a nice clear day. Left, you can see the Seal Beach National Wildlife Refuge. And if you look straight ahead right up here is um, this really cool house. You can see it from all over the area. We call it the Water Tower House. It's a, it's a water tower that was converted into a house. And it's like uh, eight stories up in the air or something like that. And it's got an elevator. I've never been inside, but I have friends that have been inside. And every now and then it's for sale or for lease. But it's kind of a cool landmark because you can kind of see it from neighboring cities. So where we're going today, the Corona Del Mar Tide Pools, it is a marine protected area. So it is very important that you know, and you'll see signs as you go down there, that you're not allowed to collect any of that sort of Thing. So that's the first part. Well, the next part, if you decide that you want to come down here on your own sometime, uh, it's important to check the tides. So I've checked the tides, for example, and I always do this before I schedule the trip. But you want to go, uh, obviously, when there's a low tide, at least for what we're going to do. Often what happens is students go, oh, I want to do that. That was fun. I'm going to take my friends next week. And they come next week at the same time about, and they go, we couldn't find the tide pools. Well, that's because they were underwater. So in order to know when the tide's gonna be good, you gotta look it up using a tide table. The two big forces that affect tides are the sun and the moon. And you can thank Sir Isaac Newton for Newton's law of universal gravitation, which explains that the gravitational force between any two objects is based on the size of the two objects and related to how far those objects are apart. The sun is much larger than the moon, but the moon is much closer. So it turns out that the sun and the moon are both important in determining tides, but the moon has the largest effect because it's closer. Uh, also, um, there are two types of tides they describe based on their uh, severity, if you will. One's called a spring tide, which occurs, when do you think? You might think the spring, but it's not. It has nothing to do with spring. Spring tides occur when the moon and the sun and the earth are all in direct alignment. That creates the greatest pull of the gravitational forces which then the water you know being a liquid is kind of bulging out um, because it, it, it gets sort of pulled away from the solid structure of the earth being liquid and it's spinning so when the sun and the earth and the moon are all aligned you get spring tides they call them spring tides because it appears that the water comes right out of the ground almost like a spring so it has nothing to do with the season really okay and then they have neap tides neap tides occur when the sun and the earth and the moon are at a right angle to one another and that right angle when they're at a right angle to each other you get the less extreme tides moon is getting uh moon's looking a little tired so i'm gonna make a quick stop drop her off at the house so she can take a long nap all right, we're getting close now. I am by Hogue Memorial Hospital, which I've heard is like the best. Tide pools, you know, you gotta wear the right uh, attire. And uh, we'll start with shoes. And uh, probably what's best, if you come to the tide pools and you're not, uh, you know, prepared with all the right stuff, Bring an old pair of tennis shoes that you can get wet because you'll probably get a little bit wet. Um, so I suggest 
a cheap pair or an old pair of tennis shoes, maybe with no socks on. I wear what looks like these here. They're like a, they're like a sandal, but um, these are by Keen. And uh, they're a sandal that um, have a closed toe, which I think is significant and important. I know that this is gonna be an unpopular idea, but flip-flops never wear flip-flops to the tight pools, in my opinion. Flops uh, shouldn't even exist. I think it's the worst possible footwear. You're basically holding on to a piece of foam with your toes. And I know it'll be unpopular, as it is with many members in my family, but I, I urge you, particularly when you go to the tide pools, don't wear flip-flops. I also wear these neoprene socks to wear those, but I get cold easy, so I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to the cold. So um, I wear those with my sandals. And my wife says it's embarrassing, but uh, it's the way to do the field trip, you know, to be maximum comfort for someone like me. But never flip-flops, ever. All right, we're getting close now. I'm in the city of Newport Beach right now. So what happens is I should usually come down PCH and I make a right onto Marguerite and then a left onto Ocean. Uh, but I have the students meet me on the corner of Ocean and Poppy. So right now I'm heading down Poppy, but Poppy's kind of a small street. So you might want to aim for Marguerite then Ocean. And that's the corner right here on the left where I have the students meet me on the corner of Ocean and Poppy, and then we head down to the tide pools from there. And I typically park just somewhere along Ocean here, anywhere I can find an open spot, and then I head back to that corner. All right, once everybody shows up, we start heading down the path right here. There's a couple of nice signs as you go down that point out some of the resources down here. And uh, so I'll point those out down as we go down. And uh, you can see the tide pools from up at the top as you head down both on the left and on the right. I tend to head to these tide pools right here. So we head down the path and um, it's a steep path. It's actually really quite tough when you're coming back up. But this is usually where I end up going right here where I'm putting the pointer here. But you can see it's a really nice day and it's a low tide right now. And so we continue heading down and you'll see, once again, I pointed this out, but this is a marine protected area. So you'll see signs all the way down and notice about um, floods and that sort of thing and tide pools and the kind of organisms you'll see and a little bit about birds and about runoff. And there's restrooms right here on the left. And that's one of the reasons I go down. And then we keep going down the path here and you'll see more signs warning you about waves and um, the intertidal zone and on a weekend or on a busy day you might see uh, they'll have a uh, docents down here kind of helping to uh, sort of control the area and control the number of people that are out and what they're doing so remember you're not allowed to collect uh, anything in the marine habitat here and in the marine um, protected area so I head down usually and I and I kind of just put my stuff up by the rocks right about here and then from here I pick a good spot and then kind of head on down to the tide pools and I get okay. set up and then we go from there. So it's taking a 360 video right now. All right, so while it takes that, I'm gonna switch into my tide pool shoes and get out there. So it's a low tide right now, and that's why we came. That's why I came down here at this time, and uh, I'll explain tides here in a little bit. Um, but today's low tide. There's two low tides here and two high tides. And today's low tide is a zero tide, meaning that it's right at 
zero. Sometimes it's a negative tide, which is better, and sometimes the low tide's like a plus half a foot or one foot, and that tide's not as good. So you want to go on a low tide, it's a tide pool organisms. And the other thing is that tide pools are divided up into zones, four different zones based on water depth. And they're a little bit imaginary because um, we have these rocks that make it uneven. But the idea is that zone one, where I'm at now, is the splash zone and basically it's always dry. And then zone two, zone three, zone four. And as you go further out, you get to zone four where you can only get in zone four on the lowest of the lowest of low tides um, because meaning that it's a tide that's almost always underwater. Um, I like this book down here if you want a book to reference it has a lot of the things that we might see down here. Um, so it's a gorgeous day down here at Corona Del Mar and I usually set up uh, on the rocks here and I get my my shoes on and my special waders and I check it out and then uh, what I'm gonna do usually here is I kind of assess the situation and uh, at low tide what I like to do is I like to start off by going out to zone 4 so I'll usually leave my stuff right up here uh, by the rocks way up in zone 1 and then I'll start out in zone four because again, the, the tide's gonna change um, over time and I wanna make sure that I'm you know, down there uh, at the lowest part of the tide. So, okay, so I'm out here by zone four. I can see some surf grass, a flowering plant right here in the rocks. And the zones aren't exactly, you know, zone four, three, two, and one. For example, you have these rocks that stick out of the water that make it more like zone three or two. And in fact, if you look on this really big rock out here where these pelicans are at, even though it's out in the water, it's really more like a zone one uh, because the rock is so high, even though it's in zone four's water and some double crested cormorants. Okay, sort of hidden underneath this rock here is a really nice set of sandcastle worms. And, and the worms are actually inside those tubes and they're a polychaete worm and they secrete a mucus that captures little sand particles and they build this tube out of sand and that's why they call it a sandcastle worm. So there's a big colony of them all scattered throughout this spot right here under this rock in zone four. Another polychaete worm I found a little bit further down. This is a calcaneous tube worm and this has a home that it makes out of calcium carbonate. So it's a much harder surface, but a polychaete worm also. I think my favorite animal on this trip at least that I saw was this brittle star. And brittle stars are hard to find. Uh, they, they're not out on the rocks they, because they lack tube feet. They're usually crawling underneath rocks. And so it's really hard to find them. You have to kind of just be in the right place at the right time. And it's even harder to get video, I think, of them. Um, so there are actually two of them here. One's pretty big. And, and one's a little bit smaller um, and you can see them crawling around in the sand here inside a tide pool and there's also a blue banded hermit crab that makes an appearance and uh, walks by them uh, so here's the two brittle stars one here and one right here and then here's this blue banded hermit crab hanging out with them right there there might even be three um, as I look more carefully now. Two, maybe three. In this uh, tide pool here, I, I found the empty shell of this large uh, wavy turban snail. 
and uh, often these are like a zone four organism and, and I almost never find them alive. The hardest place to get today is going to be this rock out here and uh, I'm going to try it. Okay, so as I get older I find this just as fun. However, it's a little bit harder each time. Well, there you go. So let's see what we can find out here. Now then, here's another nice sea enemy. We have seen one, but some mussels and some acorn barnacles on top of those. So you can see there's just a plethora like of life, you know, along here. So these are all rock, but, but it's basically covered in animals. So you've got these California mussels all over. And then on top of those, you have probably small acorn barnacles on top of those. So this rock is literally just covered with living organisms. And then whenever there's a little opening, you got a little bit of the edges of life. Another thatched barnacle there. Owl limpe. Alright. So let's uh, get out of here. We survived it. Probably a good idea not to go by yourself also. Right? You can see right here I'm breaking fall, my own you know? rule. I'm not facing the ocean. Me. Not hanging on, right not paying attention, nice, but nice. it was okay this time. No. So that's the end of the virtual field trip to Corona Del Mar. Remember to make sure you follow the rules about what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So this gives you some sort of ideas of what you can see down here on any given day. It was a pretty good day. I wouldn't say it was the best day, but it wasn't the worst day. Uh, we saw a good number of things and uh, that's it. So I'll talk to everybody later.